Well, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of RJ's Vlogs where I go in and do things that are interesting, the interesting bits of my life. Um, and today we're going to be um, putting the piece, my, my gaming PC in a new case because um, if you, unfortunately it's way out of shot here, but I have this comically large box here that is, that holds a PC case. I don't even know why Amazon shipped it in that, but oh well. Anyways, so, um, so basically I, last year, if you weren't watching the channel, I built this gaming PC, which is, it really isn't the greatest. It's only got very basic parts on it. It's got like a really basic CPU, um, not too much in the way of a GPU. I'm just using the iGPU at the moment because it was 2021. GPU prices would have been an arm, a leg, and literally every body part if I were to sell those on the black market. So let's, so, well, yeah. So, yeah. So basically, I had to, I have, I have to start addressing these issues head first. And one of the biggest issues that is definitely a huge problem, because I like to kind of show this thing off on camera if you haven't been noticing, um, is the case. The case I chose for this was the case that that um, this machine originally came with. Um, this is a 2006 e Apivia Explorer, I believe, and um, yeah, the, it was. And with it being built in 2006, they were really in that whole everything anything goes point in PC case design. So, so cable management wasn't a top priority. Um, uh, where the CPU fans go, not even a top priority there either. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of things that I had to do. I had to mod the case a bit in order to get it to work with everything. Um, you know, there's like, you know, there's some stuff that I actually removed because, you know, it was kind of pointless to have it there in 2022. And I even had to put in some new fans because the it was originally bundled with a power supply, but the power supply was starting to go old. It's an untrustable brand, so yeah. But anyways, so I bought a new case, and let's go and take a look at it. Now, one thing that I was that I wanted to also address with this is that because I don't have much, I didn't have much space, and this was the 2000s. Nobody bothered to make it where you could stow cables behind the actual back panel. Um, so basically, the big problem with that is, as well, it's kind of if you take a look, I'm gonna probably pop up a few close-up shots. My cable management was absolute terrible, um, and in the in the interim between getting those. In, between getting the motherboard and all the stuff transferred, I'm definitely going to be cleaning out the case because there is a lot of dust, especially right where the CPU fan is because with everything not fitting very well, I haven't been able to close up the case tight at all. So that became a huge problem. So yeah, also the new case that I've got ha addresses most of those dust issues because it has a, because it has the fans built in a specific way that's pretty optimal and I'm probably not going to mess around with that. I think it's even got a dust filter on that, so that's going to be pretty good. Alright, so let's take a look at the case. Alright, so here we are with the comically large box, as I call it. Um, so, yeah, words cannot describe how big it is. In fact, let me actually get a bit of a thing for scale here. So, here, 2012 Linux box that I originally used to make some of the first videos on this channel. 17 inches. I mean, this thing, I mean, literally, it it is literally as long as this laptop. So, yeah, it's comically large for some reason. Um, all I know is it made a very big cross-country trek to get to where I am. So, yeah, I'm surprised they were even able to ship this at all. I mean, they were clearly doing it through trucks and all that, but I digress. So, in, in here, we've got the other box and this is the case itself where all the weight is i need to figure out how to get it out boy yeah so i don't know if it's showing up on camera at all but what we have here if i can if i can knock this box off the little bins that i'm sitting it on well <laughs> that's huge 
Anyway, so yeah, as you can see, this is the Game Max View. Um, this normally costs this, this cost me about a hundred dollars. I was able to get it ten shaved off, I believe, because they were doing a ten dollar coupon as like a kind of consolation prize for missing Black Friday, I guess. Which is a bit concerning because I was hoping to get it on a Black Friday deal. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the big thing. Um, in fact, I'll probably go to a side view in the next while because the sides, they kind of list the specs of it and it's pretty nice. It's not the cable management stuff that I need. And yeah, so, so um, yeah, if we could go up to there, there's a, quite a bit of tempered glass on this one. So yeah, so I guess we're going to deal with the with it kind of as the instructions say, which is, eh, kind of just drop it on its head, I guess, with, well, softly, I, I, I would assume, <laughs> but yeah, because, yeah, these things are, because this thing's heavy, it's a heavy little, it's a heavy boy, boy, uh, it's probably not going to transfer very well into camera, on camera, but, yeah, don't have much room to do these kinds of things now, do we? It's gonna be interesting. All right, here we go. Yeah. Okay, here we go. They say you should. Hopefully we're. Oh, we're not completely on the table. Comically large boxes. <laughs> I, I apologize for the odd sounds that you might be hearing right now. In fact, I gotta pan this away a bit. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's our case, or at least the back of it by the looks of things. So, yeah. Remove the foam bits, I guess. Whoop. Into the comically large box you go. Oh, there we go. There's our stuff. But yeah, as I was saying, big case, I'd say. I think there's a few 140 mil fans. As a matter of fact, let's kind of flip it over a bit because, yeah, so we could get a better view of things. And yeah, we just need to get it out of the bag. And yeah, so, this is pretty much your typical gaming PC affair, as you can see. Um, don't know how it's showing up on camera, so let me fix that. Um, as a matter of fact, let's take a cut and um, take a look at it from... Alright, so here we are with the comically, eh, slightly larger case. As you can see, it's the typical tempered glass case design thing that they typically like to do with these. Cases. Let me just get a little bit of a close-up on that. It's got the um, protective cover, not covering all the tempered glass, but, you know, it's tempered glass. And if we look out the front, there's more tempered glass. And um, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but you can see the three, I'm going to say 140 mil case fans. I'll definitely get the calipers on it um, when, when, when we get the upgrade finished or when we're in there. And yeah, and then if we go up to the very, very top, you can see that there's all of our FPIO. Well, it's not FPIO, it's TPIO, I guess, or top panel IO. It looks like they've, they've kept the um, lighting scheme for the, um, for the power and disc LEDs. Yeah, and yeah, as with it, there's, as with the side panel, there is, there's some protective covering on that. We will save that for when we've installed the machine. And if we can flip it over to the side, there's the thing. Um, I think the clearance from, from like this, from this top panel IO side to there is roughly, if I had to take a guess, would be about how much space you get for um, cable management for the cable management area because um, they did say 25 millimeters of cable management there I'll probably cut to a shot again of the um, things 
And yeah, also this thing has some pretty nice dust covers and by the looks of things, room to put um, some, some AIO coolers. Um, so yeah, so let's get on, let's get on with um, transplanting the, the machine as it currently exists into this beautiful case. And while we're there, we'll clean it up. All right, so here's the, so here is the old case as it exists. Um, and yeah, this does scream 2006 with this design. And no, it's not MSI, I, rem I checked. MSI wasn't doing this kind of stuff in 2006. In fact, I'm probably gonna transfer both of these stickers there. And as you can see, um, yeah, the sticker of shame. I know, I use a Core i3. I mean, hey, it's, it's adequate, I guess. You know, I've edited heaps of videos on this thing. It, it, it works okay. You know, it runs Minecraft at 60 FPS on fancy graphics with mods on Linux. So, I'm not complaining. And, um, yeah. And so at the very top, we have, I put in, we have a DVD burner. That came with the original PC that was in here. And a floppy drive. Um, the original PC that was in here had it, but not this exact drive. Um, I kind of needed a floppy drive still because, um, yeah, my parents have a lot of um, floppies that they want archived, and so, so I was like, oh hey, I'll just, I'll, I found a um, USB to floppy adapter, and so I, a USB floppy controller, so I plugged it into the back of this, installed it, and. They gave me a bunch of their floppies that they know they have stuff on, and um, yeah, I've got ISO files of floppies now on this machine. And down here is your FPIO, um, also with the power buttons right there. About the same level of clickiness as what the new case has. Um, this used to be a fan speed controller, but I removed it, and I tried removing the potentiometer because I was planning on putting an audio thing on here. I might continue doing that now that I've got a 3D printer and the adequate means of doing that and I think I've got a few 3.5 millimeter jacks that lying about that I could just desolder and without any shame whatsoever and yeah and right here that's supposed to be a thermometer you know that's so it's like oh it's it's 100 degrees in there oh better turn that knob up <laughs> you know and gotta speed up the fans and then there's our and then there's all the relics of old um, as you can see, the typical two USB ports are USB 2. This top one actually got massacred by one of the, by um, a thing for my 3D printer, the um, USB um, to SD reader that came with it. The thing is terrible. In fact, I actually kind of touched on it in my review. It had an internal short and it actually almost went to flames and busted that USB port. It actually still works for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. And then there's a Firewire. I've never found anything that uses Firewire. I don't have an iPod or anything like that, which would benefit greatly from Firewire, but I don't think Linux has the greatest drivers for those. And so, yeah, that's it. Um, this thing do did come with lighting. In fact, it came with blue lighting. Um, this case was originally for a PC of my friends, and unfortunately, this is the only remaining lens for it. I don't have any clear PLA, otherwise I would make I would make or remake one of those diffusers pretty easily. But yeah, when it's on, there are blue LEDs, so yeah. So this was kind of like, you know, that interstitial point in time when companies were trying to try out lighting, and but they weren't fully set on the idea of RGB LEDs yet. All right, so now that we're there, um, let's, get, let's get a good old look-see at the side of this machine and um, clean a few things off and yeah because we've got a lot to do and right off the cuff you can see that um, yeah I don't have any screws on this because I couldn't get it to um, get it slot in which is a bit of a problem and yeah this thing has a lot of dust uh, in fact I'm actually not really done with using this case because once this is done uh, my mom wants this so um, yeah, so I do want to clean up everything, and I'm definitely going to be keeping these case fans in here, because the new case has fans on it. 
Um, and yeah, this thing needs a huge dusting job. Luckily though, I did get my hands on some compressed air, and yeah. Now let's see. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few things here that I want to touch on. Um, let's see, there's this hanging SATA port, um, this SATA power connector. It goes to the original drive that was originally in here. I had a very busted copy of Lubuntu on it that I originally had, because this thing used to have like a an Athlon 64 gaming machine in it, and um, yeah, unfortunately it's not the greatest, and yeah. In fact, we could just start by removing this, because yeah, you know, 320 gig, 7200 RPM, it's not the most powerful. Um, but yeah, I do want to get, I do at least want to get my, all the files from the Lubuntu install off of it. Well, not all the files, because the OS was, the install got, I broke, I borked the install, like literally the, like, yeah, uh, like shortly before I, um, put new parts in it. So yeah, we're going to definitely get that fixed up. And we're also going to unplug this stray case fan that, um, if I can just pan down here, um, there's a stray case fan that the company put on the side. I don't know why they put it on the side panels, but it seems like one of those cliche 2000s things that they, companies liked to do, I guess. So yeah, I've definitely got to unplug that before I continue on. And doing that kind of unveiled all the dust that is in this thing, um, you know, one and a half years later, and uh, yeah, this thing's dusty as as it gets, you know. I mean, look at that. That is soot right there. That needs to be, um, we definitely need to definitely spend a few minutes, at least with the compressed air, when I get the motherboard out of this thing. Um, in fact, every fan on here needs it, even the ones that didn't get any air. I guess I could blame that on my terrible cooling design, but yeah. Um, otherwise, the actual motherboard doesn't have any dust in it at all. My little, the little MSI Pro motherboard that I put on this thing, that actually is pretty spotless, I'd say. Um, you know, it's mostly just the CPU fan and all the stuff that was up against the case fans that were a huge problem. I'm definitely going to dust a few things more than that, but, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the only trouble area. All right, so let's get the screwdrivers out and let's start on on building. So we're now at a different angle because I feel bad for this motherboard now because it is kind of being held on by two screws and those two screws are kind of holding on the motherboard and I feel bad because it's kind of straining the motherboard a bit. So back to time lapse and um, yeah, back to getting these two screws out and finally discarding this case for once. Okay, now that we are, and now that we are all clean, fresh, and uh, everything in between, we can now start working with our new case, which, oh boy, this looks nice. All right, let's get our little finger screws off. These are some nice quality finger screws, I guess. Yeah. And, oh, oh that is a nice sliding mech. And <laughs>
poor idiot, um, as you could tell. I, I, I actually had just filmed like five minutes worth of footage about complaining about the fact that I can't get it to line up properly with the um, back plate. But that's because I thought the um, that I had tightened the um, standoffs enough. Um, no, I hadn't, and they were only basically finger tight. So that just that just fell. That just was like, and then I realized that I am a complete idiot. So yeah, but now that I've tightened the the um, thing back in, fits nice with the back panel. Might have to do a bit of um, gentle pushing to get it to kind of line up. But yeah, other than that, we do have, we can now start putting some screws in. You know, and if I could, and I just need to find more screws to put there. And um, once we do our first bit of testing, I do also want to test fit something to make sure that our fan actually does line up with the, um, tempered glass. Oh yes, that is snug as hell. There we go. Good, 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 good. Everything checks out. Good. Everything fits. I mean, this narrowly fits. This still has a millimeter before it actually becomes a huge problem. But yeah, it's not going to It's not going to be the biggest problem of planet Earth at this point. Um so I just need to get more screws out and we're going to we're going to take a bit of our and we're gonna put in our new motherboard. And we're gonna put in our motherboard. Yay! All right, there we go. This thing's gonna fit more wonderfully. And also, because we're getting rid of the floppy, which takes forever to do a seek test, I think we're gonna have way more space, and we're gonna have way more speed behind our our thing. motherboard is screwed in that is not going anywhere and now we need to add in our first bit of wonky wiring that probably won't be cable managed at all because I can't really cable manage this and that is this serial header that I bought for it it works perfectly fine on this motherboard and you know it works you could get it on a standard PCI slot so um, yeah I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna probably take the slot at the bottom and I'm gonna hook it in because I do really kind of like having a serial connection and a um, parallel connection because I was hoping to get into zip disk at some point. So, you know, and I was hoping that I could use the LPT thing that it, this motherboard has as the as basically the little parallel SCSI system that that is kind of common with these kinds of things. So let's get one of our um, PCI covers off and we'll install that. Alright, so we got our little, I got my little, um, my little LPT and serial port in there. I, I, I am one of the very few who still actually kind of needs and makes use of serial port. There isn't really a good place to put them in this case for cable management, but I wasn't expecting that because Nobody uses Serial and LPT in 2022, really. Unless they're trying to get something off of it, an iOmega zip disk, which is kind of the camp that I'm in. So, yeah. So the next order of business is this power supply. And um, I'm going to do this upright because then I could get access to the other side of the case. Ooh, all the normal cable management. All right, so there we go. So now we're on the back. They they got a bit of a body filter to put on the back screws, so they aren't finger tight. They're just machine tight, and I'm not about to get the screwdriver on those when I could just use my pliers like a weirdo. And there we go. One. Ah, I didn't untighten it enough. Come on. These are finger screws. They're supposed to be finger. They're supposed to make finger tight be actually pretty good and tight. 
three. Yep, three half turns did not help. <laughs> Fine then. There we go, We're starting to get it to turn. With confidence that turn happened. Right, so there's our other side, which is got the same kind of cable management job as I would expect. Let me just pan over the cam a bit. Unfortunately, I don't have that good of a lighting back here. But, but yeah, there we go. There's all of our connectors. And there's the little, um, there's the little ARGB controller that they put in the, um, that they put in for us. It's a pretty nice one. Um, so yeah, this does our lighting and our fan speeds, I guess. Um, we'll get these while we're at it because we're going to be installing more fans. Well, at least one more fan because we've only got like, yeah, we've only got the power supply and the, um, and the CPU fan left to, to make powerful and all that. And there we go. So here we go with the last bit of that and down here, all of our connectors for our for our things. That's definitely going to be a thing. There's that one standoff that we kind of that time forgot about from me, or I forgot about it. I'm not sure if I have it upside down or what is right side up. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely upside down. All right, there we go. Uh, you know, I thought that. Having the, the having the actual power supply on the bottom would actually help in letting me see the RGB. Nope, that, that didn't happen. Right. And turn it around once more so you guys can see all this. Even though you really can't see that much of it. I tried. There we go. And back with our good old mate screwdriver. Um, yeah. Glad these are mag magnetized screws so we could push from one side, get from, and screw in from the other. And good, we've got our first one in. Let me just fix that up. I want to hit that with a bit of compressor. Actually, no, that's paint chip, I guess. Oh, hey, these are the actual, no, these are the original screws from the power supply. Okay, let's see. Next screw. Oh, okay, that explains the paint chipping and why they look worn. Because I did use these screws in the past. Yep. Need to kind of push it in a little. And. And there we go in. There's my third. Ah, oh, there's the third one. Good. So yeah, this is this is coming out pretty nicely, I'd say. And there we go. That power supply isn't going anywhere. Alright, so while we're here, I'm going to deal with putting in our little Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas because we, you know, I, even though I really don't like how I have a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth motherboard, it is actually the Bluetooth drivers on the Linux distro that I use are actually pretty good and it's, and honestly, they're pretty cool because I could use this thing as a Bluetooth speaker for some reason, probably because it's all, um, probably because it's all set to be for audio stuff and yeah. Okay, now let's get everything plugged up, I guess. You know, everything all plugged up, plugged in, and yeah, and screwed in, and we have a computer. We have a computer yet again. An actually usable, functional computer that doesn't have to rely on the furniture around it to be the, um, to be what holds it together and holds it tight. So, let's start with, let's start with the biggest, I guess. And that would be our CPU, well, that would be our main power supply power. There's our 24-pin huge connector. 
I see why they wanted to do 12VO so badly. Alright, so I think we've got all of our connectors in. I don't have much storage on my camera right now, um, so I'm going to kind of make this segment a little brief. So, um, yeah, and I am able to um, close up the case, this back panel, just fine. Um, so, yeah. So this turned out way better than I was hoping, actually. You know, everything actually went kind of smooth, I'd say. Um, if I could actually get my case back on there because I did I was able to test fit this without one of the cables but yeah get right on there but yeah that fits nice and right on there um, let me just try getting the finger screw in and there we go so that kind of concludes the wiring of that <laughs> All right, so here we are. I, there it is in its actual prime habitat. I already boot tested this. This thing actually is pretty good. And um, yeah, I shut it down again because I do want to show one thing. Um, I am going to power it on and look at how fast this thing boots. So there we are. And um, and yeah, now that we're on, now we're getting to BIOS and. Now it's getting to get the display out, and and then there's all of our Kubuntu warnings, and watch this. That's that's like instant. Um, I was half expecting this because we don't have a floppy in there anymore, but also look at the case. It, it looks better in real life than it does on camera, but holy hell, that is a very 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 nice um, thing. So I'm definitely probably going to dim the lights a bit and show you it. And But before we do that, I've got one bit of important business to do. And that is to remove these films very nicely. Very, very nice. And on this one, which is a bit harder to peel, but especially because it's behind a monitor and half of it. That is a very nice peel right there, and yeah, this is, I couldn't, this went perfect. You know, this nice, I mean, the, the way they designed this is actually pretty nice. And, ooh, is there actually more tempered, is there actually more tempered glass inside? Well, whatever. But yeah, there we go. This thing looks perfect. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we'll do a bit of a kind of tour of the case as it's now up here. Um, I can't really get a good overhead of the FPIO, unfortunately, or the top panel IO. Um, even though the um, diffusers of these LEDs looked like they were going to be a um, green and orange deal, these are actually blue and red LEDs. This one doesn't show up well on camera because I have my camera kind of white balance otherwise, but if I go into some power and do some things, okay, the thing is orange, but yeah, but there we go, and then we just, you know, this thing booted real quick into Kubuntu and all that, and Kubuntu is one of what's considered the more bloated OS's in the Linux family of systems, so yeah, so I guess time for some closing thoughts. Alright, so some closing thoughts on this beautiful beast of a machine that I, that just got its upgrade. This thing looks beautiful. I really love this case. Everything fits perfectly. Everything went flawlessly this time around. Well, okay, not flawlessly. There were a few moments where I was a blithering idiot, but you know what? This looks perfect. Um, you know, the, the RGB stuff at the bottom. I can always, I have my good old Linux stuff, which can, all my Linux software that can do the RGB con controls. It's the same stuff on the inside, but it looks beautiful. Um, I really like how the execution went on this. I don't really like how the case doesn't have drive bays anymore, like 
five inch drive bays up top, but you really can't expect that in 2022 going on 2023 because we've only got two weeks left in 2022. But, you know, especially with this being a gaming PC, everything's going to be on an SSD or a mechanical hard drive somewhere. So, yeah, it kind of checks out. But, you know, this was probably, this is probably one of my favorite jobs, I'd say, because, you know, it's not too, too hard to do and the, the results are, are good and beautiful. So I'm going to definitely be, I'm definitely going to be kind of cleaning out the old case a bit and kind of doing a few things with it. But yeah, this thing came out perfectly. And if my mixing board that I normally use doesn't go so great, I've got little header, I've got a little header at the top, but I typically prefer mixing boards and stuff with actual headphone amps because, you know, I mean, it'll definitely drive one of these um, SR850s that I just recently also got. But, you know. But anyways, so, yeah. So that's going to do it for today's video. Um, if you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, I'm definitely going to be working on a part two. I'm definitely saving up for that because um, I'm going to be putting a GPU in here because, as I've mentioned, this thing does not use a full-on GPU. It just uses the Intel iGPU, all because I built this thing back in 2021. So you make it out of what you will but yeah this thing's beautiful and i'm definitely going to switch this um video over to the end credits and a bit of um and a bit a bit of um b-roll footage that i'll probably shoot later because i'm a bit tired today um so anyways thanks for watching and bye